So I found another example of a right winger doing exactly what the left is always accused of doing, getting too outraged at something that isn't really worthy of outrage. We're always accused of being too easily offended, too overly sensitive, getting triggered by everything, and we're called snowflakes. However, when the right does it, they're not called snowflakes because their outrage is totally justifiable. So when they get triggered by you desecrating the flag or kneeling during the national anthem, that's okay because they find that offensive. And any and everything that they deem as too offensive is, in fact, objectively too offensive. But whenever you get outraged, usually in cases of uh, injustice, that's not okay because you're a leftist. And being on the left automatically makes you a bad faith actor. So obviously I'm being facetious, but I want to share an example of right-wing outrage that definitely won't be called out by people who oftentimes denounce the outrage machine and cancel culture. I'm talking about alt-right fuckhead Mike Cernovich, who got really, really triggered at something that Bernie Sanders put out on Instagram. He tweeted, the Bernie Sanders campaign is using footage of an assassination attempt against Trump as a political ad. This is a direct incitement to violence by Bernie Sanders. Now, what is this incitement to violence he's talking about? Um, this. <laughs> this is an open and shut case. Bernie Sanders is definitely inciting violence against Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> Let's try to entertain this for a little bit. Um, first of all, Bernie Sanders himself has been in situations where somebody has rushed the stage and tried to take away the microphone from him. Do you know how Bernie Sanders responded? He tried to shake their hand. He didn't run or freak out like Donald Trump. But Bernie Sanders has been in situations like that. So you'd think that he wouldn't try to minimize instances of direct threats of violence like this. But he still posted that meme. So is Bernie Sanders essentially making light of a very serious situation where Donald Trump was in danger? Um, no, because if you talk to the person who tried to rush the stage that day, he is very clear that he was not trying to harm Donald Trump. This is what he said about his reasoning for rushing the stage back in 2016. I was thinking that Donald Trump is a bully and he is nothing more than that. He is somebody who is just saying a lot of bold things. He's making bold claims, but I can see right through that and I can see that he's truly just a coward and he's opportunistic and he's willing to destroy this country for power for himself. All right, well, that's your motivation. But what were you thinking at that moment? I was, Why did you do what you did? I was thinking that I could get up on stage and take his podium away from him and take his mic away from him and send a message to all people out in the country who wouldn't consider themselves racist, who wouldn't consider themselves approving of what type of violence Donald Trump is allowing at his rallies uh, and send them a message that we can be strong, we can find our strength, and we can stand up um, against Donald Trump and against this new wave he's ushering in of, of truly just violent white supremacist ideas. Were you, if you had made it to that stage, were you going to attack him? No, not at all. Now that clip is widely available. Mike Cernovich could have done a quick Google search to determine whether or not that was a credible assassination attempt on Donald Trump, but he didn't. He not only accused Bernie Sanders of inciting violence, but he then claimed that that was an assassination attempt. Facts do not matter to the right. They don't matter at all, they don't care about it, and they also don't care about their own hypocrisy because they can be as easily offended and not care. Bernie Sanders shares this harmless Instagram meme, and all of a sudden, a right-winger wastes no time calling that an incitement of violence. Do you understand this double standard here? This is what happens all the time. This is a microcosm of a broader issue because the left will get demonized as fascistic because they're milkshaking fascists. However, the right will literally 
kill people, and commit the overwhelming majority of domestic terrorist attacks, but they still find a way to demonize the left as the ones who are more violent. The right has a different set of standards for you than they have for themselves, because they are incapable of introspection. Again, if they find something too offensive, then we shouldn't laugh at them, because all of their outrage is morally justifiable and socially justifiable. But when you speak out against genuine instances of injustice socially and culturally, well, you're just being a snowflake, because things you like are bad, and things they like are good. These are bad faith actors, and this is why there can be no alliance between the left and the right in any capacity. We have to defeat these people, politically and socially, because if we don't, then you can deal with a set of double standards for everything. They can be outraged, uh, but you can never be outraged. The far right can do a majority of violence in this country and literally kill people. Meanwhile, we're all focusing on Antifa, regardless if you agree or disagree with our tactics. This is the way that the right is able to monopolize political discourse and create whatever narrative that they want. And even if we push back against it in mainstream media, we have no money on our side. David Dole did a video where he talked about how, you know, these right-wing YouTubers, they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars on advertising. Meanwhile, the left is not. So they are able to take a narrative that is backwards and factually incorrect and spread it because they have the money behind them. But getting back to the original tweet here, to say that Bernie Sanders was inciting violence, here's what I say to that. Grow the fuck up, Snowflake. Stop being too easily offended and easily triggered. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.